Hi, my name is Muhammad Fakur Razi. Today, me and my group would like to present on value chain analysis. But first, let me introduce you guys to my group members. So now, let us begin. Okay, for the next part, we will proceed with the definition of value chain analysis. So basically, the value chain analysis is a string of collaborating players who work together to satisfy market demands for a specific product or services and also increase the value of each of those products or services. And also, value chain analysis is defined as one of the strategic management accounting as the provision of information to support the strategic decision of an organization. So basically, strategic decision is usually involved in long term and have a significant impact on the organization and although they are mainly the internal element, there are also some of external element involved. Okay, now I will proceed to the next part which is value streams. So, for value stream, we divided this into two categories. The first one would be the product industry and the second one would be the service industry. So, for this slide, I would like to present the first one which is product industry. But, before I proceed, let's take a look on the definition of value stream mapping. So, Value stream mapping is also known as a material and information flow mapping. It is lean management method to analyze the current state and designing a future state for the series for the series of events that take a product or services from the beginning of the specific process until it reaches the customer itself. Okay. For the value stream for product industry, there are three categories which is raw material, manufacturer, and network distribution. So, organization of a product industry need to consider adding value for these three parts. So, for the value stream of, the, of a product industry, it, it is not limited to only for these three parts. There are much more. Um, values that need to be considered to be added to increase the organization as a whole. Next, we will proceed with the service industry in value stream. So, for the first part, it is on supplier. The second part is on technology. The third part is on service producer. And the last one is on distribution channel. So, the organization of the service industry need to consider adding value to all of these four but as the same as the product industry it is not limited to only these four there are much more values that can be added to maximize the organization as a whole the objective of value chain analysis all right now we can proceed to the next part which is objective of value chain analysis so the first objective of value chain analysis would be to understand all major constraints in each of the components to improve the performance and the competitiveness of an organization so the second part is according to the United States Postal Service explain that the purpose of value chain analysis is to create value that exceeds the cost of providing the product or service and can generate a profit margin. Next one is to identify the behavior of cost and the areas of depreciation and this will be further explained further in the slide regarding cost advantage and also differentiation. And the last one is to able to fostering growth and to reduce poverty, expanding the debt and also breadth of the benefits generated of the organization. Oh, and the important part of the objective is to always create value 
in terms of all the necessary aspects of the organization to increase the competitive advantage. Yes, for each of for each organization, they must have a competitive advantage over others. So therefore, value chain analysis can analyze specific impact on each of the following segment to increase its value, to increase their competitive advantage. Porter's value chain. Okay. As we all know, value chain analysis derived from a business management concept that developed by Michael Porter in his book of competitive advantage in 1985. So basically, Mr. Porter explained that the value chain is a collection of activities that are performed by a company to create value of its end user, in this case, the customers. So value creation Increased added value that leads to competitive advantage, which is the most important objective of value chain analysis. Hence, the added value can also lead to higher profit, profitability for an organization. To further explanation on value chain analysis model, it creates the word chain is based on the link system and activity of each other and demonstrate its effect on the cost and profit. Consequently, consequently the value chain analysis makes it clear where the source of value and the losses can be found in the organization itself. So now I will further break down the Porter's value chain analysis. So, as you guys can see from the figure, there are two types of activity, which is the primary activity and also the supporting activity. So, the primary activity is basically the operation that we see, the day-to-day -day operation that we see in, a, in an organization. So, this basically consists of inbound logistics, operation, outbound logistics, marketing and sales, and also service. For the second one would be support activities. So the support activity acts as the backbone for the primary activity to ensure the effectiveness and efficiency of the whole business operation. So support activity consists of firm infrastructure, human resource management, technology development, and also procurement. All of the support activity and primary activity coexist with each other to ensure that the profit margin of the organization of the organization can be obtained. So next, we will proceed with primary activities on value chain analysis. So as I mentioned earlier, primary activities are the activities that is shown to the general public and we can see it in our day-to-day -day, day -day activities of the organization. So to further explain on the items in primary activities, they are consistently of five, which is inbound logistics, operations, outbound logistics, marketing and sales, and also services. So let's move on to the first part, which is inbound logistics. So the processes that are bound in inbound logistics are involved in the receiving, storing, internal distribution of the raw materials or basic ingredients to produce a product or service. The relationship with the supplier is essential in creation of value in this matter. Yeah. So for example, we can implement the JIT just in time inventory system as an example which designed to achieve efficient inbound logistics. Hence, there are many other examples in email logistics that can facilitate in minimizing shipping times that can ensure in the creation of value such as the warehouse layout and design to increase efficiency of operations for incoming materials. So basically, to create value in inbound logistics, these type of activities needed to be implemented in order to create value. Okay, now we proceed to the production, also operations in the primary activities. So for this part, um, it is where the raw material 
or the um, input is be converted into output. So in this case, in the product or services. So the operational systems are the guiding principle for the creation value. So basically, for example, the efficient plan to operate at minimizing cost and also efficient plan layout and workflow design to ensure the efficiency of the workflow and lastly incorporation of appropriate process technology these are the values that can improvise in terms of the production and also operation of the business yeah. so basically all that the explanation that I've given is in general it doesn't specify on which uh, industry is the product or service industry that will be further explained in the slide later on okay the third part is outbound logistics so for these activities are relating to the to the delivering of the product and services to the customer but it doesn't necessarily rigid to only delivering is also related to the storage of the uh, finished product that has been undergo the production process okay to create value in general for this manner is regarding the effectiveness of shopping processes to provide quick delivery and minimizes damage um, this maybe can uh, reduce the cost and also the uh, lead time between um, the production and un until the delivery the, of the product to the customer and also the shipping of goods uh, in large lots of sizes to minimize transportation costs yeah. okay the next part would be marketing and sales so for this activity it is regarding putting the product and services in in the market which means that to the public um, for the public view um, so this is also enhances in the managing and generating customers relationships so um, when enhancing customers relationships this can increase the sales this can um, um, gather much more attention from the public and also the guiding principle for this manner would be setting oneself apart from the competition and creating advantages for the customer so um, this is mainly focused on the elements of the external factor which is the customers so emphasis emphasizing customer satisfaction also plays an important role in marketing and sales uh, value creation so uh, innovative approaches to promotion and advertising also creates value proper identification proper identification of customer segment that needs also can improve the management in terms of determining which target market to be focused on um, to create value in marketing and sales lastly we have service so service is uh, an activity that can maintain the value of the product of all services to the customer as well as soon as the relationship is developed uh, based on the procurement of services in the product yeah so basically after the sales are made relationship need to be maintained with the customers and also uh, the organization to, to ensure um, a long relationship a long um, and never-ending income of sales to the organization the service profit chain model is an alternative model which specifically designed for service for service management and organizational profit so basically this service profit chain model is used uh, to enhance the after sales service of an organization uh, quick responses to customers needs and emergencies such as warranties and also customers complain or, or can also create value in this manner and also a quality of service of personal and ongoing training so basically after sales service uh, personnel need to be well trained and also uh, professional in their line of work um, in uh, answering the customer queries to ensure customer satisfaction
further down the line, we have support activities. So support activity within the portal's value chain analysis assist the primary activity in the form of the basis of organization. They act as the backbone, as I mentioned earlier, to the primary activities in the day-to-day -day operations. And also, the support activity consists of four, which is the firm infrastructure, human resource management, technological development, and also procurement. So let's go on one by one, shall we? So the first one is firm infrastructure. This concerns the support activity within the organization that enable the organization to maintain its daily operations. Line management, admin handling, financial management are examples of activities that create various organizations. So um, things like uh, effective planning and overall goals and objectives. So basically this is like the board of directors staff uh, that provide um, uh, goal congruence to the um, organizations and also excellence relationship with diverse stakeholders groups such as shareholders, um, creditors and also other external um, stakeholders of the organizations. So basically, an effective information technology to integrate value creating activity. So all of this um, matter is focused on the management, also board of directors decision um, as a baseline of the organization to increase value. Yeah. So next, we have human resource management. This support activity is development of the workforce within the organization is the key element. For example, regarding recruitment of staff, training of staff, coaching of staff, and also compensating and retraining staff. All of this matter um, will enhance uh, the staff competency and also create value in that manner. So things like effective recruitment, development, retention mechanism for employees, all of this can help to increase uh, value in the human resource management. Quality, relation, quality relations with trade union, um, and also most importantly, uh, reward and incentive programs to motivate your employees. Things like bonuses, maybe like a yearly a vacation to motivate um, the organization employee in order, in, in order for them to be uh, to encourage them to work much more efficiently uh, in the organization in organiza in that organization. So it means that if the um, employee satisfaction is high, therefore the work efficiency and the work production is also high. So thus, automatically, it will create value in the human resource management. Next, we have technological development. So in this activity, the development of the product and services of the organization, both internally and externally, um, are being emphasized in this manner. So things like um, technological innovation, improvement and development of new product, based on new technologies, all of this will create value in terms of technological development. So, um, for example, like things like um, research and development uh, in creating innovative new products and also po uh, positive collaboration with other uh, organizations and also excellent professional qualification of personnel. So basically, in terms of research and development and the usage of new uh, technology technology be introduced by the public or by the recent um, economic changes, technological development. So this um, will create value to the organization in terms of um, a new ways in uh, managing the business regarding the whether it is in terms of production, whether in terms of um, information system of the organization so yeah that, that will create value in terms of technological development okay so finally uh, we have procurement so procurement is the activity related to the service to the customer for from the organization 
So the example of these activities is entering into a managing relationship with suppliers, neg negotiating to arrive at the best prices, making product purchase ag um, agreements with suppliers, and also outsourcing uh, agreements. So basically, procurement is regarding uh, the most effective and efficient way in dealing with external party. So in this manner, supplier and customers. So, uh, organis organization may, um, uses primary as support activity as the building blocks to create valuable products and services and distinctiveness. So, things like procurement of raw material to, opt to optimize quality in production and speed uh, to minimize the associated cost and also development in, collabor in collaboration with other organization uh, and also an analysis and selection of alternative sources of input to minimize dependence on one supplier. So basically all of this business relationship that we had um, with the supplier and also the customer will create value automatic automatically to our organization. Um, so um, basically all of this activity supporting and also primary activity need to coexist with each other in order to create the best profit margin for the organization. So we proceed to the advantages of value chain analysis. So when an organization implement a value chain analysis to determine the value of the organization, they can obtain a few a few benefits in implementing value chain analysis. So the first one um, the organization can easily identify those activity that can quickly reduce costs, optimize effort, eliminate waste, and also increase profitability. So in the areas or in the segments that I mentioned previously, which is the primary and also the support activities, they can reduce costs, optimize effort, and eliminate waste and increase profitability in each of those areas. Next, we have the organization can provide insight into elements that brings greater value to the end user. So, the, the organization can identify which is their strength in the organization of the business operations, um, regardless whether in terms of um, raw material acquisition or in terms of marketing or and sales service. So, they can um, recognize their strength in which particular area. Next would be identifying activities that are better served by outsourcing. So um, if they can identify those um, elements that can bring value, they also can identify elements that um, they are not very proficient with. So for this um, area, they can decide to outsource um, to an external organization. Thus, they can reduce costs because um, from outsourcing, the, ex uh, the external organization will do the service for the organization itself. So hence, they can um, minimizing costs in terms of labor and also uh, proficiency. Next, we have optimizing the activities that lead to its competitive advantage and resulted in higher profit levels. So when they manage to create value, um, in the specified area, they can uh, improvise the competitive advantage um, against other competitors and also resulting in higher profits, which is the which is all of the organization goals in creating um, higher profits. Next, we have disadvantage to follow up with the advantages. So there are a few drawbacks um, when implementing value chain analysis. Um, to be highlighted here would be um, if the if the operation is too focused on the micro details of each of the segment that they wanted to focus, there would be um, the broader strategy of the organization they tend to be lost. So for example here, uh, if um, the organization tend to focus on the acquisition of raw material. They wanted the um, low price um, raw material. 
so they they tend to forego the organ organization goals in term of high quality product thus this uh with um loss of the organizational uh, goals congruence next would be poor job linking of each activity in the chain together and lose sight of how the activity broadly inter interrelate so basically when you tend to focus on when you tend to to be too focused on one area um um, the, the organization will tend to lose um, the subsequent process of the business. For example, I take the example earlier within the acquisition of raw material. If the company is too focused on finding the low cost raw material, they tend to avoid the subsequent parts regarding operation and also uh, the delivery. For example, if you take a low quality, uh, low quality raw material, so there's a possible um, in the delivery process, um, the product could break. So this can um, lose the sight of the how of, um, of the how of the activities broadly interrelate further on down the line. To be added here is the limitation of value chain analysis. So there's a few um, limitation in implementing value chain analysis in an organization. First is regarding the difficulties in the gathering data, and also it is not easy to find appropriate information in order to break down the value chain into primary and supporting activity. For example, um, we take example of a small company. Uh, a small company or a small organization does ten, uh, tend to not have all of the um, activities to be uh, further break down into, into the value chain. So it's a bit lacking here and there. So it's a bit hard to implement value in those sectors um, that wants to be selected. And also it is quite, it is difficult to gather the data and also time consuming to implement the value chain analysis. So it is required a high proficiency um, management accounting strategy, uh, a, a proficient management accountant to really um, um, in-depth studying of the organization to produce a high quality value chain analysis model for the company itself. Next approach there are two different approach in value chain analysis one of the approach is cost advantage cost advantage is a strategy based on seeking cost leadership will require a reduction in the cost associated with the value chain activities or a reduction in the total amount of resource use. This approach is used when organization try to compete on cost and want to understand the source of their cost advantage or disadvantage and what factors drive those costs. So, as Mr. Fakrul mentioned up earlier about the general meaning on value chain analysis, I would like to specify on the value chain activity of overall cost leadership on primary activity. So, based on the definition of cost leadership, cost leadership emphasizes on the cost minimization in all activities in the firm value chain, such as R&D, service, sales force and also advertising so um we can take an example of inbound logistics regarding acquisition of raw materials in bulk so basically this is one of the strategy to minimize costs in terms of acquisition of raw material so that the firms can minimize the cost and create value on that area other than that 
delivery of product in large amount also help in cost minimization of outbound logistics which can create value in the firms when applying overall cost leadership strategy. So next, we will take a look on the overall cost leadership of value chain analysis regarding supporting activities. So as mentioned earlier, there are four in supporting activities from infrastructure, human resource management, technology development, and also procurement. Okay, let's take a look of an example on human resource management, such as minimization of costs associated with employee turnover through effective policy, such as bonus incentive, um, recognition, and also career development that can help reduce labor turnover. So, increase expertise in process engineering to reduce the manufacturing costs in the technology development would also help in creating value in the value chain activities of overall cost leadership because this can minimize its costs. There are five analysis steps in cost advantage. First, identify the firm's primary and support activities. A firm has to identify and separate all the activities starting from receiving and storing materials to marketing, selling and after sales support to produce goods or service. This step requires an adequate knowledge of company's operations. Second, establish the relative importance of each activity in the total cost of the product. By breaking down the cost, the manager can use activity-based costing in order to analyze the cost. Therefore, the company has to determine the priorities of the activities that require higher cost. Third, identify cost drivers for each activity. Manager can focus on improving the cost by understanding what factors drive the cost. Different activity will have different cost drivers. For example, Cost for labor intensive activities will be driven by work hours, work speed, wage rate, and others. Fourth, identify links between activities. Cost reduction is one activity may lead to cost reduction in subsequent activities. For example, fewer components in the product design may lead to less faulty parts and lower service costs. Sometimes, cost reduction is one activity lead to higher costs for other activities. The last step in cost advantage is identify opportunities for reducing costs. When a company notice its inefficient activities and cost drivers, it can plan on how to improve them. For example, too high wage rates can be dealt with by increasing production speed outsourcing jobs to low-wage countries or installing more automated processes. One of the companies that adopt cost advantage strategy is IKEA. IKEA is a leading global brand of home furnishing products 
The business sells trendy home furnishing items that cater to the taste of modern people at reasonable price. The key reason behind the success of the IKEA brand uh, is low cost by high quality products. The business handles its supply chain and manufacturing processes effectively to keep retail costs down while being creative in terms of style and design. Primary activities First, inbound logistics. Inbound logistics refers to the inward flow of goods into a business and includes transport and storage. This is an important area in the value chain, optimizing which helps businesses grow their operational efficiency and minimize costs related to the inventory management and logistics. This company tries to reduce transportation costs and therefore 20% of IKEA products are shipped directly from the supplier to the store. The company sources from 1,800 suppliers in more than 50 countries. Distribution centers located strategically at key locations around the globe. The company has 42 trading offices located close to the suppliers. It is for managing supplier relationship. In 2018, the company acquired a distribution center in Dubai and started the construction of another one in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Second, operations. IKEA operates a franchise system that has helped the brand expand internationally faster. The Inter IKEA Groups is the owner of the IKEA concept. The total number of IKEA stores worldwide reached 433 in 2019 and moreover the company reaching its customers to uh, e-commerce in 50 markets. The business model of IKEA includes three core businesses franchise, rich and supplies, and industry. The franchising business oversees the operation of the franchises. The range and supply is responsible for developing and supplying product to the entire range. IKEA industry is the core area of the inter IKEA groups and produce wood-based furniture. It made furniture of two types which include solid wood-based furniture and lightweight or board-based wooden furniture. The top five countries where most of the production take place are Poland, Russia, Slovakia, Portugal and Sweden. Next, outbound logistics. IKEA transport around 20% of the product to the stores directly from the suppliers. However, the rest are transport using IKEA distribution system and distribution centers located in key locations around the world. IKEA customers can choose to pick up product from the stores. To keep expenses minimized, the company does not offer free delivery. Self-assembly of products also helps IKEA minimize costs. The fourth primary activities of IKEA is marketing and sales. IKEA has adopted an innovative marketing and sales strategy that uses a mix of traditional and modern channels. The organization has also developed an outstanding sales and delivery network owned and run by its franchises. IKEA use in-store promotion to grow sales and offer a distance 
shopping experience to its customer. In terms of marketing, apart from using digital channels, the company also used traditional promotional channels and some other innovative methods. The company used its website and apps in combination with digital advertising as well as social media for customer engagement and to drive sales. It also used video marketing to consumer education and promotion heavily. Another important way of marketing the brand is the catalog that the company publish for its customer. It also used AI and virtual reality to help customer test item in store before they finally purchase them. IKEA sells a very large range of home furniture products. The company stores have around 9,500 products in each year. The design team at IKEA is at 2,000 new products to the collection. Lastly, product and service. All teams are a part of the production process, which include suppliers, franchises, as well as the internal engineering and design team. Corporate to make design and production cost efficient and effective. Apart from that, IKEA use flat packaging which has helped it improve operational effectiveness and also minimize transportation expenses. Unlike other retailers, IKEA does not provide transportation and assembly services. However, it keeps the costs minimum this way. IKEA is focused on maximizing customer satisfaction by offering a large range of modern and stylish furniture. There are four IKEA support activities consist of infrastructure, human resource management, technology, and procurement. First, infrastructure. IKEA has divided its business into three main segments which include franchises, range and suppliers, and IKEA industry. IKEA also manages its business on a regional basis. Regional basis is there is a local autonomy for day-to-day -day decision making and regional control over strategic aspect of the subsidiary businesses. Each function of IKEA from finance to HR and communication has its own head. Second, Human Resource Management IKEA focus on the efficiency and satisfaction of its employees has increased in recent years. Overall, the company employs around 211,000 people worldwide. Apart from hiring and retaining the best employees, the company has also developed attractive programs to help the employees manage growth and find career investment opportunities. Next is technology. Technology has played a significant role in optimizing cost effectiveness and operational performance at IKEA. Digital technology has played a key role in helping the company overcome its production, supply chain and sales and marketing related challenges. The company is investing in digitalization to improve its manufacturing capabilities which is necessary to meet the ever-changing needs of its customer. Digitalization also helps the company workers 
with more ergonomic workplace. Moreover, digitalization will allow IKEA to have a seamless end-to-end -end IKEA supply chain, improving traceability and security. Lastly is procurement. IKEA sources from around 1,800 suppliers in more than 50 countries. The company has also established trading office at strategic location close to where its suppliers are located and focuses on developing long-term strategic partnership with key suppliers. Integrated logistics has also enabled IKEA to make its procurement process more cost-effective and successful. Okay, hi, my name is Liana. After we all know about what value chain analysis, Porter's value chain analysis, advantages and limitations, and also what cost advantages with example is, now let's learn about what differentiation advantages is. The differentiation advantages is a business which wishes to outperform its competitors through differentiating itself through higher quality will have to perform its value chain activities better than the oppositions. It also can take many forms such as prestige or brand image, quality, technology, innovation, features, customer service, and dealer network. It will create a unique value that we have in our organization. Okay, next, we should know how differentiation advantages implements in value chain analysis through primary and support activities. So, first, in primary activities, it's more focused on how company can get a superior material for their handling operations to minimize damage. Also, the effectiveness and quality of the operation to achieve a low defect rate and high quality of the operations. It also focuses on the accurate and responsive order processing through outbound logistics. Besides that, a creative and innovative advertising programs and rapid response to customer service requests also need to be implemented in the differentiation advantages. Then, for support activities, company should focus on the facilities that promote firm image. In human resource management, company also can provide training and incentive for the employee to motivate them in giving a strong customer service to the customers, a high technology in superior material handling and sorting, and also for a purchase a high quality components to enhance product image will giving a uniqueness and increase the competitive advantage to the company. Okay, now let's take a look on the steps of differentiation advantages. It have three steps of differentiation advantages. Firstly is identify the customer's value creating activities. After identifying all value chain activities, manager have to focus on those activities that contribute the most to creating customer's value. For example, Apple's product success in mainly comes from great product features as other brands like Samsung, Oppo also have high quality offerings too but from successful marketing activities and the second step is evaluate the differentiation strategies from improvising customers value it needs to identify the value creating processes that differentiate a firm's product or services with its competitors such as add more product features, focus on customer service and responsiveness, increase customization, offer complementary products and for the third step is identify the best sustainable differentiation 
The firm should use or utilize the best combination of resources in order to create value for customers to achieve the best differentiation. Okay, after we know what is differentiation advantages in generally is, now let's see examples of differentiation advantages, which is Starbucks Variation Analysis in Primary and Support Act. Starbucks Primary Activities. Okay, first, inbound logistics. Okay, the inbound logistics for the Starbucks refer to the company appointed coffee buyers selecting the finest quality coffee beans from producers in Latin America, Africa and Asia. In the case of Starbucks, the green or unroasted beans are procured directly from the farms by the Starbucks buyers. These are transported to storage sites after which the beans are roasted and packaged value is added to the beans through Starbucks proprietary roasting and packaging which helps to increase their selling value. The beans are then sent to distribution centers, a few of which are the company owned and some of which are operated by other logistic companies. Okay, the company does not outsource its procurement ensuring high quality standards right from the point of selection of coffee beans and next is operations okay starbucks operates in more than 80 markets either in the form of direct company owned stores or licensed stores okay starbucks does not follow the traditional franchising terms the company has more than 32,000 stores globally. It is also the owner of several brands including Tivana, Settles Best Company and Evolution Fresh. Okay, according to its financial reports, the company generated 81% of its total net revenue during the first half of its 2020 fiscal year from its company operated stores while the licensed store accounted for 11%. Let's move on to outbound logistics. There is very little or no presence of the intermediaries in product selling for the Starbucks. The majority of the products are sold in stores. However, Storage and distribution to retail uh, locations are important. Okay, and then for marketing and sales, Starbucks invests more in superior quality products and a high level of customer service than in aggressive marketing. However, need based marketing activities are carried out by the company during new product launches in the form of sampling in areas around the stores and for the service Starbucks aims at building customers loyalty through its in-store customer service a signature retail objective of Starbucks has always been provided customers with a unique Starbucks experience and service training is a key component of the value chain that help to make its offerings unique. A substantial amount of value is created when the baristas make drinks for customers. And next, let's move on to the Starbucks support. Now let's study about the Starbucks support activities. Firstly, infrastructure. This includes departments like management, finance, legal, and others which are required to keep the company's store operational. Starbucks employs business managers in its corporate office. It also has store managers on site that help to oversee well-designed and pleasing stores complement 
with good customer service provided by the dedicated team of employees in green aprons. And for the human resource management, the committed workforce is considered a key attribution in the company's success and growth over the years. Starbucks employees are motivated through generous benefits and incentive. The company is known for taking care of its workforce, a key reason for a low turnover of employees, which indicates great human resource management. There are many training programs conducted for employees in a setting of a work culture which keeps its staff motivated and efficient. For the technology development, uh, the Starbucks is very well known for the use of technology, not only for the coffee related processes to ensure consistency in pace and quality along with cost saving, but to connect to its customers. Many customers use Starbucks stores as a makeshift office or meeting place because of free and unlimited Wi-Fi. Starbucks has launched several platforms where customers can ask questions, give suggestions, openly express opinions, and share experiences. Technology helps to implement this feedback, especially in the area of its rewards program. Starbucks also uses Apple's iBeacon system, wherein the customer can order a drink through the Starbucks phone app and get a notification of its readiness when they walk in the store. Okay, and the lastly is the procurement. Procurement is integrated across various aspects of the supply chain. Porter discuss procurement as a support activity. Many companies will establish broad terms, requirements, and standards for all their procurement dealings. However, procurement relationships typically very widely. Uh, Starbucks handles all the procurements for its own coffee beans, which it sees as one of its competitive advantages. Okay, we proceed to to the impacts of value chain. First, many companies manage both physical and virtual value chains. The differences in approaches are best illustrated by comparing the consumer experience of utilizing the services of brick and mortar bank and those of online banking. Customer service experience, infrastructure and technology needs are some of the many aspects that need to be addressed when evaluating and adapting that value chain. Second. The company should study the rapid technological advance as society onboards new and unknown technology. Value chains need to be continuously re-engineered. Societal questions about increased urbanization, the rapid rise of online shopping, and the changing expectation of the consumer are all consideration as valuable as the cost of raw material, warehousing, and the delivery of any product or service. Lastly, as companies adapt the basic value chain to the 21st century, many look at this methodology as a journey of transformation rather than a destination. As such, value chain analysis will continue to be a relevant and useful tool to develop and maintain a sustainable competitive advantage. Impact of value chain on pandemic COVID-19 First, implementation of lockdowns and factory shutdowns. 
many businesses have been forced to reduce operation or shut down and an increasing number of people are expected to lose their jobs next demand from both consumers and businesses slumped for the duration of the lockdown consumers are more mindful of what they are buying they are striving to limit food waste shop more cost consciously and buy more sustainable options reduce consumer expenditure beyond impacting some of the factors that determine consumer spend such as consumer confidence unemployment levels or the cost of living the covid-19 pandemic has also drastically altered how and where consumers choose to spend their hard earned cash lastly impact of value chain on covid-19 is various sectors are also facing considerable operational constraint due to lockdown social distancing measures and the risk covid-19 represent to employee health in short micro and small businesses experience a larger decline in business activity compared to medium and large firm this forced government and decision maker to reassess the use of information system and technology so here is a short video example from youtube regarding value chain development we explain value chain development meet gil gil lives in east timor and works as a farmer his family suffers from low income and poor living conditions as Timorese horticulture farming provides a very low return. Gil can only cover his own needs instead of selling his harvest. He's worried. Despite working hard day and night, Gil can't make enough money to support his family. Meet Amivi. She is a researcher for the International Labour Organization. Amivi wants to understand why Gil and other Timorese farmers cannot support a better livelihood. Amivi sets out to find what's in the way of better jobs in East Timor's horticulture sector. But how? She takes a closer look at how horticulture products get to market and the roles that farmers, traders, wholesalers and other actors, as well as supporting functions and roles, play in the process. In doing so, Amivi applies the value chain development approach. First, she tries to understand how the market works by talking to different market players and understanding their roles and needs. Doing this, she determines one of the obstacles preventing higher productivity, the farmer's lack of knowledge about modern cultivation techniques. Amivi discovered that this information was exchanged in larger, more central markets. But Gill had no access. So Amivi looks for possible market-led solutions. She finds Erin, a specialized distributor nearby, who is interested in expanding her business. Amivi proposes a deal. Erin agrees to provide training and sell quality inputs to farmers and in exchange buys back their produce at a fair price. This improves the supply of information about cultivation techniques and the benefits of high-quality inputs. It allows Erin to grow her distribution network and increase profits from additional sales of inputs and aggregated produce. What's more, the agreement increases productivity by creating new market relationships that better enable smallholder produce to get to market. So what was the key to success? Instead of proposing a short-term quick fix, Amivi uncovered the root cause of the problem by understanding the system and together with its key players found solutions for making the whole value chain work better this resulted in increased income as well as better quality of work for gill and other timorese farmers as well as other actors in the value chain so 
from the previous video, we can get the overview of value chain development. So basically, we have Gil, which is, who is a farmer that have the problem to support a better livelihood. So Emily decided to understand how the market works by approaching all the market players and, under, and understanding their roles and needs. The market players would be Gil, the farmer, traders, and also the wholesalers. So Emily um, identified the root of the cause, which is the farmer lacks of knowledge in modern cultivation. So she decided um, to help Gil um, to obtain those knowledge, um, but not only in that part. So she decided to implement a strategy that can coexist with all the other market players. So um, she decided to introduce Erin, a distributor, to help Gil um, in exchanging knowledge in order to obtain high quality produce so so that can Erin can buy back the product at a higher price and also distribute those products to the wholesalers. So hence um, this can increase her network distribution and also increase profit. So the overall conclusion of from this video would be that um, in order to implement a value chain analysis, it must um, added value to the whole players in the chain itself. So, for example, like if you want to uh, imp increase the value um, in the input, therefore, um, the subsequent uh, players, such as the in the process or in the distribution channel, must also receive the same value as the input uh, previously. So. That would be the conclusion for the value chain development. Last but not least, we need to know the application of value chain and define and understand your company value chain. Okay, follow the steps. Okay, step one is identify the sub activities for each primary activity for each primary activity determine which specific sub activities create value and there are three different types of sub activities the first is direct activities it create value by themselves for example in a book pub publishers marketing and sales activity direct sub activities including making sales calls to bookstores advertising and selling online and for the indirect activities is allow direct activities to run smoothly for the book publishers sales and marketing activity Di indirect sub activities include managing the sales force and keeping customers records and for the quality assurance activity is ensure that direct and indirect activities meet the necessary standards for the book publishers sales and marketing activity this might include proofreading and editing advertisements and for the step two is identify the sub activities for each support activity for each of the human resource management technology development and procurement support activities determine the sub activities that create value within each primary activity if for example consider how human resource management adds value to inbound logistics operations outbound logistics and so on as in step one look for direct indirect and quality assurance sub activities then identify the various value creating sub activities in your company's infrastructure this will generally be cross-functional in nature rather than specific to each primary activity again look for direct indirect and quality assurance activities 
Okay, for the step three is identify links. Find the connections between all of the value activities you have identified. This will take time, but the links are key to increasing competitive advantage from the value chain framework. For example, there's a link between developing and uh, developing the sales force uh, and HR investment and sales volumes. There's another link between order turnaround times and service phone calls from frustrated customer waiting for deliveries okay for the step four is look for opportunity to increase value which is review each of sub activities and links that you have identified and think about how you can change or enhance it to maximize the value you offer to customers which is customers of support activity can be internal as well as external. Okay, this is the end of our video regarding the value chain analysis. Our team members really hope that you will get a valuable input from this video as your knowledge. Any inquiries regarding the value chain analysis, you can ask us later. Okay, thank you for watching our video. Hopefully you enjoy it. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.